So with Edouard uh, Moex, just having tasted a, a, a run of 2016, which I have to say is one of the uh, ranges of wines I look forward to, perhaps the range of wines I look forward to tasting more than any other. But uh, 2016, uh, for you, are there any comparisons that you could make with any other vintage? It's the inevitable question that is asked, but we have to ask it. Well, it's, it's, um, it's an impossible vintage to match with any other, to, to be honest with you. Um, however, for me, it's a great consumer vintage. Uh, because every single appellation of Bordeaux has produced some beautiful wines, and any purse will be able to find its pleasure. Um, and, and for me, that's, uh, that's the strength of Bordeaux. Bordeaux is a very wide appellation and very often people only uh, pay attention to the, the few top brands and what they do. Um, and there's, uh, there's wonderful wines, wonderful people producing uh, uh, very exciting wines. And, uh, and, and in, in these vintage, they all express themselves very well. Which is sort of connected, I guess, to the, to the next question, which is inevitably also. About, about pricing, because we have a legacy together and separately of 2010 and then of the difficult 11 campaign, 12, 13, more difficult, 14, the signs of recovery, 15, mm -hmm. perhaps a missed opportunity, but a, a lovely vintage. And then now 16, a relatively big vintage, not necessarily here, uh, but in general. Uh, and yet nobody has an idea of how Bordeaux is expecting to offer it. Um, well, the answer is very simple. I do not perceive any drop in prices. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, the percentage of increase, it's very hard for me to say. I mean, we, at, at this stage, uh, uh, there's a lot of, of our uh, uh, exclusivities that we've had purchased from, from the growers. Um, and uh, there, there has been increases, um, reasonable increases, and I hope that the, the rest of Bordeaux will follow the, the, that reason. It was quite interesting that the, the, from the tasting this morning that the, the, the so-called lesser wines were quite beautiful, mm -hmm. um, and there were some there were some lovely wines. Um, and, and I guess again linked to the first two questions, and there's a link in, in, in perhaps all of these questions. Um, the perception among the young of Bordeaux, and by young I mean in, uh, people in their twenties who are just embarking on uh, the challenges beauties, delights of, of, of wine in general, but how do you think they are placed with Bordeaux in particular? Well, um, obviously Bordeaux is considered as traditional and, and I don't think that will ever change. However, it seems that uh, um, there is uh, um, a belief that on top of being traditional it's up, up and coming and uh, 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 following the fashion and back in fashion. Um, and I hope that the, the young drinkers uh, um, will see Bordeaux as uh, um, a wine that will attract their attention at one stage of their life, or of their drinker's life. Mm. Uh, because Bordeaux has a lot to offer, and, um, and it's not only about the claret. And uh, uh, Bordeaux, being a, a land of immigrants, uh, mm. um, is by definition a land that reinvents itself at every generation. Mm. Yeah. And uh, the specific opportunities and challenges of 16, we know that until, I remember because it was my birthday, and it rained five days solidly, and then that miraculous change, uh, 15th to the 20th of June, and then the most beautiful weather pattern until really the end of October. Very dry, mm -hmm. but as we were saying earlier, uh, not particularly or excessively hot. Uh, what, what were the opportunities in that climate? I mean, uh, opportunities were survival uh, mm. to start with because uh, obviously we had a very mild and wet winter which uh, um, allowed um, an expected but uh, a much more violent development of viruses and, uh, and, and bugs. Uh, um, and then we expected, and everybody single, per, every sorry, every single uh, uh, um, grower in Bordeaux almost lost their crop at one point or another. Mm -hmm. um, the um, and then we went from that uh, uh, huge stress of uh, 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 protecting our vines from viruses uh, 
uh, to uh, protecting our vines from uh, you know drought, mm. uh, um, and it's uh, we it's it's the yin and the yang sort of uh, vintage where we went from one opposite to the other, but and funnily enough, without uh, our doing, they met in in the middle and fa found their balance. Mm. Um, and sixteen, the the wines have an unbelievable balance. People talk about freshness, which I'm not sure is is the right term. But for sure, it's a pleasurable vintage, and it gives pleasure today, and it will keep on giving pleasure uh, uh, for the many coming years because there's the there's the right level of acidity, there's the right core in the wine to hold everything together. Uh, the alcohol is not too high, um, and these are very long-lasting wines. Whether they're great or very good, I'm no one to judge. Uh, um, all I know is we'll have a lot of pl pleasure drinking them. Yeah. Yeah, I suspect so too. I suspect so too. And we try always to describe a vintage uh, in a phrase or even one word. And I think we've given you five words or up to five words to try and describe 2016. What would you choose? As your well, the question that was asked to me was actually what makes your wine unique? <laughs> um, and uh, clearly our wines are not unique because that would be very pretentious. Um, but what we try to do with, with our wines, and we're lucky to have multiple vineyards, uh, being on the right bank having small vineyards, um, it's to produce wines that are mouth-watering. Um, and uh, that are honestly made for the consumer. Uh, um, wine is a beverage and it, it needs to be uh, uh, appreci appreciated as such. Um, and we probably are the, the number one drinkers of our own wine, but that's only because we need to understand them as much as we can, so we need to drink a lot of these. Uh, uh, but apart from that, we, we just want to give pleasure to people. Yeah. That, that's a slightly evasive response, but I, it's a good one, it's a good one. I remember you used Sorry. to say that if you, if you didn't want to drink a bottle, then it really wasn't probably worth drinking at all, and, and, and certainly we do like drinking quite a lot of, of your wines. And then the, 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 the silliest question, but actually it's produced some wonderful answers, which we, we, we discuss later, but if there was a person in history, media, culture, sports, uh, that you would associate most closely mm -hmm. with 2016, if it was a man or a woman? Uh, well, my, my answer is actually two people. Uh, and it's George the Sixth for its unexpected coronation, <laughs> and it's Elizabeth, the Queen Elizabeth for its longevity. <laughs> That's a brilliant answer. Excellent, excellent. Edward, thank you. Thank you very much.